is this the bottom for the Pulse Chain ecosystem and all the coins that we hold near and dear to our hearts? What, what do you think? Um, well, so the conditions that needs to be met for this to be the bottom is you'd want to see Ethereum and Bitcoin kind of hold these levels and not go any lower. Uh, but currently, that doesn't look like what's going to happen uh, because it was such a huge breakdown. But not to say it can't. Uh, there was a huge, like I said, there was that huge wick on ETH, and that's promising. That's a good start. Um, like this, that this levels hold, right? Um, and with that ETF thing, that was kind of bullish news too. So maybe this was just like a a a, 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 a push down just to liquidate all the longs, get all the open interest um, out of the market, all the leverage out. And then absorb all that spot supply, um, and then you know create like do like do a markup, and then create another range where they can make money over. When I say they, I mean like the market makers can make money over another extended you know three to six month time period at like a higher at a higher tick, and that would be like the the most op that would be the best thing that could happen out of this. And if that does happen, um, chances of Paul's bottoming here is actually pretty good. But uh, you know, and there, we're, we're, we got some stuff to look look for now. We got to see, uh, we got to see the twenty one day moving average um, act as support. And that's like your bull market support band. So, you know, we tried here to get above it, and we held it for you know a couple weeks, and then it, it broke, and then retested and rejected off in that in that fundamental bad news. Um, and I think what I'm looking for is at least. You know, create some form of a bottom here. Come up here, get above the 21 day as the as the price rises up. The 21 will kind of base out, and then we can start to bounce off that as support. Start creating some upward momentum. Uh, maybe test that. Get above this downtrend here of the one, two, three taps downtrend. Get above that, retest and resume off that level. So there's a lot that has to happen here, but you know, to keep an eye on the 21 day would be good. Now, any close below this level here and i would be concerned because you're basically in free fall you could easily decline another 50 percent from that level um and i know it's not something people want to hear but that's the reality of where we're at and it could, all it takes is one guy to dump you know 30 billion pulse and it really kind of sends a shockwave through the entire system wow and, and uh it is everything lining up as far as the are the charts are they similar or way different? For example, Hex, is it, is it, is it in a similar situation? So in terms of um, that question, Hex looks a lot better. Uh, let's see here, where is it at? So yeah, Hex looks a lot better in, in its dollar pair on the Pulse chain, but it doesn't matter because all, if, if Pulse drops, you know, look at when Pulse drops 67%, Hex dropped seventy percent. So if if, but it also ran up better too, right? So it, you know, Hex ran up one hundred fifty seven percent here. PLS only ran up sixty two percent here. So you know, so yeah. So they, I guess the net result is like if one big bag holder decides to dump Pulse, it wrecks everything with it, right? So it doesn't. You're more looking at what Pulse is going to do. If, you know, if Pulse holds, everything's peachy. If Ethereum and Bitcoin hold and start to move higher, I think but I don't think there's a reason why Pulse would have to drop lower, unless you got some sort of another fear event, right? Like I was saying before, like if he found out Richard slept with a 17-year-old girl and the DOJ was coming after him, you know, not to put fear out there, but just saying that would be probably a good sell the news event. <laughs> but uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. How many? Uh... How many 50% drops? I mean, is there a point where we just, I, I guess, is there, is there a way to look at, are we running out of sellers? Like, is there a way to answer that kind of question? Or, or And would that be the bottom if that happened? Uh, I know it's a tough, I know we want to know this. We want to know when, you know, but it can, technically it can go down forever. You know, so it, it's, that, that's not, a, not something you want to hear, but that's the reality of it is it can continue to drop 50%. Like, look at, it's hilarious to me how this is even possible, but like if you look at eHex, it's done so many 50% moves lower over the course of the last 700 plus days. Um, so in terms of Pulse, like, you know, there's a lot of people that sacrificed a lot of money. And like if you go to this PulseLead.com, 
pulse lead dot X, Y, Z. That's the one. You know, there's guys in here, 10 million, 9 million, 8 million, 6 million, 5 million, 4 million. There's like hundreds of guys, you know, and there's at least 100 guys that have 700 grand or more in this. And even though they're down 50% right now, they still can dump and affect a chart, right? So that's just the reality of where we're at. Any one of these guys can dump. And if there's any follow through from the rest of the market, or like, let's say Bitcoin drops for another extended period of time and this doesn't hold right which you know i don't know we can't prove like let's say let's say it happens like 2019 and you get this on bitcoin right and it, you know because look the way I, the way i measure this is you know shout out to steve courtney from crypto crew you he's, he's looking at the gaussian channel on the five day and you go back to like previous cycles anytime the price goes into the Gaussian channel here, it taps it, it breaks down through and creates, you know, a time period of red and then you have to break out, but it takes an extended period of time. That was that first cycle, you know, and then in that second cycle, you came down here off the blow off top, broke down into here, and then it was like, it absorbed the price back down through it and pulled it below it for an extended period of time. And then the price had to get above it and not touch the band, the, the Gaussian channel again in order to continue on its parabolic rise. And then going into last cycle, the same thing happened, but it happened twice. So you fell through after the blow off top, broke down below, broke back above, broke back into it, fell below, new lows, or, or I should say uh, lows for that year on the COVID crash, and then the red, and then we finally got above it. And then, yeah, there was a test of the base, but it never closed below. But as soon as you started closing candles below after this blow off, I mean, it was, again, yeah, we got out, but then we got sucked back in for the bear market. And so we just recently, you know, today... We broke down in here so we need this this five-day candle to close basically at, at this level which would be twenty-seven thousand or above um uh, on by sunday night at at uh zero 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 utc um or otherwise this thing's going to get absorbed down in and what that looks like is you know we don't we don't bottom on this until potentially like early in the year so and if that occurs, then yeah, on Paul's chain, you're looking at consecutive 50% drops until the overall crypto market bottoms, right? But once it does, you know, that's why I say, you know, this could be uh, an extended, you know, 100 to 300 day period of opportunity to buy all these things at super low prices. Yeah, just to, I know you touched on a little bit, just to reiterate though, what, what, what do you need to see in order before you before you feel comfortable before you're like okay boys bottoms in like what what would you need to see for uh, out, out of the pairs um so i and i think i'd what i'd like to see is you know continually holding the 21 daily as support would be a fantastic start so like we need to hold it for consecutive period of time so if this 21 day starts to curve out price gets above we go sideways for like 6 months you know, and we still make like marginally higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. This isn't going to be something that's going to happen overnight, guys. Like at this point, like our chances of just like spiking down and like rocketing out of here in three months and being off to the, I just don't see that right now from where I'm sitting based on the dollar and other things that's going on in the macro. So it's going to be a long sideways accumulation period. Um, so I'd like to see us hold the 21 um, to start, and then we can start taking out these resistance levels. So here, 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 and then holding those as support for another extended, like mo many months of time. So we won't know that the bottom's in until it's like way in the past, which is why your best bet in terms of a buying strategy is to buy every new low, always have dry powder for every new low. Um, and because you can't do limit orders on pulse chain, you're kind of you're gonna have to set alerts so that if you if we do make new lows, you can come in and put some money in um, on the things you care about. Um, beyond that, I mean, I'm I'm doing a TA course. Um, I'm I'm working on the content right now, so that'll be coming out. I want to get it out soon, guys. Like I I don't have a date yet. I you know I'd like to get it out as soon as possible. Um, but it's going to be in depth. It's going to be like a multi-day course. Like we won't be doing like a boot camp style this time. It's going to be you know, like a weeks of time for a course. And they're just going to go through everything that you get that I can try to relay all my seven years of experience in markets and, and teach you guys everything that I know. So look out for that, you know, and, and in that, you know, we can get deeper into the indicators of like, 
you know, what, you know, the, this Gaussian channel, for example, and just the, how to analyze things like the RSI here. I'll give you another one. So like the, we'll use the EHEX chart on the RSI and, you know, I've been using this for a while, but basically this is the entire price history of HEX um, in terms of its relative market strength. And this middle panel here is like the mid range of, of strength. So a 50 level is even is neutral um, below 50 you're looking at a weaker market above 50 you're looking at a stronger market and like the overall theme here of hex is that hex during this period of time its first 600 days was a completely different asset than the last 600 700 days basically ever since that may of 2022 when pulse chain did not launch um let's see you know this was September. Oh, okay, this was the sorry. This was the uh, fifty cent top, and then this here push down low was end of the year of twenty twenty one, and then this little spike here was Paul Sack sacrifice phase. So even though the price went from twelve cents to thirty six cents, the relative strength of the market during this period never even came close to coming up to these levels. That's how strong the hex market was on the weekly. So one of the things I could teach you guys is how to read this. RSI on different time frames and do different types of time frame analysis to give you a, an idea of when things can recover. And so currently, like, we're in this, like, unique period where, like, Hex on Ethereum is potentially going to make new lows in the, uh, in the RSI, which would be, like, generational buy opportunities in the event that eHex survives. And for it to survive, it only has to go to one to five cents. Because it, it's such a huge, from one tenth of a cent to five cents, is a huge markup. It's 50x, and so there's there's a market there that can be created. Now, do I think it's going to stop there? No, I think it can go a lot higher than that. That's my belief, because of the shit that happened here over the first three months of this year. Everyone forgets that Hex went and did like a 700% return in like 90 days, or 70 days, or something here. Yeah. So what I would look for in terms of bottoming is you want to see this RSI really start to move and try to get above that 45 level. And like we can play around in there and then and continue to rise higher on this weekly. So you're looking at, you know, bottom being set sometime this end of this year. And then next year we should actually be a lot better off um, based on what I'm seeing. Because here would be your low higher low and this is like an attempt to set the bottom here but we do need to start seeing some positive price action so so the tsi the total value what about holders anything metrics around um holders or wallets or anything like that that we, that we can see to try to uh see what's going on here yeah so like i there's a lot of cool websites out there for this um but hexfire.io does a good job of uh, kind of giving you like adoption. So like like staker adoption, you could, staker adoption on uh, hex on pulse chain is still increasing, and I think just people on the east side are just like holding off because they're trying to accumulate liquid bags over there and not so interested in in staking with the uncertainties of gas fees and things like that. Um, but you can look at things like that, right? You can look at adoption, amount of holders amount of stakers and and watch those metrics specifically on the pulse chain as well and and there's pl places you can go for that i think uh dip catcher made some sites for looking at like pulse chain adoption statistics and uh you know all that stuff's increasing like uh you know on go pulse you can see that people are validating you know we're almost at forty thousand validators so that means that this is a very well decentralized you know ecosystem you know and uh this is consistent apy that these guys are making so there is incentive there to make money and they're going to make money at these prices even if the price falls 50 percent and they hold for a couple of years they still make money so it's this is like just the the correction period is like kind of hard for people to see where it can go but uh the yeah, adoption still looks good and uh you know i, I that's another factor that can play into, you know, determine whether how bullish you are. Uh, you know, I think we, I've talked a lot about TVL, 
hex TVO. Um, and, you know, during this time period here where this TVL increased in the beginning of the year, like there was like thousands and thousands of buys and thousands of sells, but there was way more buyers and sellers during this period. And actually this whole period here, buyers were outnumbering sellers like two to one, three to one days were five to one. And so there was a serious adoption happening, um, during this period and then you know that all kind of diluted into the other coins and on the new chain but uh so the adoption has been happening for sure you know and i think right now because the prices are so depressed the community is getting a little quiet but you know it's going to take somebody with some balls of steel and some money to come in here and ignite the fire and then everyone's going to be back well the fire lighters, I think we've got plenty of community and team, uh, not team members. We're not a company, we're decentralized, uh, but we've got plenty of community, uh, people in the community, such as yourself, man, just uh, sticking with it. And it's one of those things, people, I don't know, They, it, it's like, you know, the mood can fluctuate, green candles, red candles, all that stuff. But if you're sticking around, and even earlier, you know, you mentioned... It's, it's one of the few communities, maybe the only community where we can literally be like, yeah, 99% down right now and just go on. Like, don't even flinch. You just keep going. Like, yeah, let's just continue talking. That's that's not even an issue. We're not even talking about that right now. We're talking about the future and 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 why we believe in this thing. And we're talking about, uh, you know, how to be successful in all these areas and not even worry about the, the price go down. So that is extremely cool, in my opinion. Yeah, so we're in that period. You guys are wrapping up here. Like, let's think about this more. But at this point, it's about coin accumulation, um, you know, and not so much about dollar USD values. USD values more in that that later phase of the bull market cycle where you can start to extract like serious returns that you know you otherwise wouldn't be able to get in in legacy finance, right? But right now, the game is coin accumulation. Um, some people, it looks different for different people. Some people sell local tops and buy the bot new bottoms, the new lows. Some people just accumulate their DCA. Everybody's got a different strategy, um, but ultimately your coin count should be going up. And if, if you don't want to do any of the trading or analysis, that's fine. Um, have that core staking ladder going, working for you. I know a lot of us that did that early on have 50% or more of their bag now. It's just yield that they've got through hex staking. And now uh, there's other options with uh, pulse validating and other things too. So lots of opportunity out there. I hope you guys are, you know, got your eyes on the buy button.